villager arrested after report of bad behavior at a town square. A fire damaged homes decaying into neighborhood eyesore in the villages. A homeowner in the village was ordered to remove artificial turf. A DUI suspect in a golf cart leads cops on a wild chase in the villages. Officials in the villages questioning seco explanation for huge increases. What has been causing the fish kills in the villages? More lightning strikes causing fires in the villages. Hooters restaurant coming to the villages. You think it's a good fit? The Villages is suing a federal agency to protect a key part of the sales strategy. Villages board to take key step to crack down on businesses in the homes. More unlicensed drivers from Mexico caught in the Villages. How many holes wins of golf do we get this week? Letters to the editor. This and more coming up. Hey, we got some updates to do. Let's get them out of the way. A landscaper once accused of ripping off a blind villager is back behind bars. Santos Perea Albaran, 73, of Okahumka, was booked Friday morning at the Sceptre County Detention Center on a warrant charging him with a failure to appear. Bond was set at $2,000. Albaran had been arrested in 2017 after allegedly ripping off a blind woman in the village of Palo Alto. He had solicited the villager about doing some landscaping work. She paid him with a check, but because she was legally blind, she asked him to fill out the amount. Mm, don't ever do that. I don't, there's no excuse for that. It wasn't long before the villager was contacted by Citizens First Bank, and she learned that the check had been cashed for $500, not $170, at the Wells Fargo Bank in Leesburg. As is updates. You guys want to know what a problem child looks like? You're going to see. A villager's problem child landed in jail after she was caught back behind the wheel. Lynn Elaine Kaminsky, 61, of the village of Silver Lake, was arrested at about 11 a.m. Thursday by the Lady Lake Police Department on a third-degree felony charge of driving while license suspended. She was booked at the Lake County Jail and released after posting a $10,000 bond. An 81-year-old villager has penned a letter of apology and made restitution, allowing her to escape prosecution in a theft case. The prosecutor's office announced earlier this month in Sumter County Court that Catherine Mormon of the village of St. Charles will not be prosecuted on the theft charge. She has paid $36.99 in restitution to the Aldi supermarket at Trailwinds Village and wrote a letter to the store manager admitting she is embarrassed and ashamed of her unlawful act. A driver who lost his license due to a drunk driving conviction has been jailed after a traffic stop at the villages. Paul Panico, 64, of Lady Lake, was driving a brown sedan at 3.15 p.m. Sunday when he was pulled over on Chula Vista Avenue in the village of Mira Mesa after an officer ran his license plate and discovered that the vehicle's registered owner has a suspended license. Panico was arrested in January on a charge of driving under the influence and in April pleaded no contest to the case. He was placed on probation for one year and his license was suspended for six months. After the officer confirmed the suspension, Panico was taken into custody on a charge of driving while license suspended, the native of New York was jailed without bond at the Lake County Jail due to the probation violation. A villager who had been accused of tormenting her neighbors will avoid prosecution in a stalking case after her neighbors were forced to sell their home and leave the villages. Susan Barr, 77, of the village of Santa Domingo earlier this month in Sumter County Court agreed to enter into a pretrial intervention case in order to avoid prosecution. She must complete an anger management course, seek a mental health evaluation, perform 40 hours of community service, and stay out of the Walgreens at 1581 Bella Cruz Drive. Neighbors said they began to be terrorized by Barr after she adopted an aggressive pit bull mix and let the dog run loose in the neighborhood. That's when you get your 22 
two pistol out and shoot the dog. According to the Rush Department, Sunset County Sheriff's Office, the pit bull chased people and bit a neighbor's dog. Barr's fixation appeared to be on a particular husband and wife in the neighborhood. Barr would walk her dog in their backyard and disturb their cats, which were usually in a fully glass floater room of the couple's home. The St. Louis native's pit bull was seized by animal control in December, and after the dog was taken away, Barr began shining her vehicle's headlights into the neighbor's home and honking her horn when driving by their house. The neighbor said Barr honked her horn because she knew it made their dog nervous, prompting it to bark. Barr also went to the local Walgreens where the wife works and filed two false complaints against her in an attempt to get her employment terminated. Barr went to the pharmacy on February 18th. Even though she did not need to have a prescription filled, she began to yell and harass employees at the pharmacy. She was asked to leave. The couple installed a surveillance system at their home because they were so alarmed by Barr's behavior. The exchange was captured on video surveillance. They told a deputy they placed their home for sale and they cannot continue to live in a continuous emotional emotional distress and fear anymore. They ended up selling their home in May and moving out of the villages. I don't blame you. This lady's a nutbag. Dead fish were found floating in a pond at a golf course in the villages. The dead fish were spotted Friday in a pond at the Amberwood Executive Golf Course. Dead fish found earlier in the week in the village of Pine Ridge. One of the primary causes of fish kills is oxygen depletion in the water, which is more likely to happen during the hot summer months, according to the village's district office. Fish kills, while alarming to witness, typically affect only a portion of the fish population, with many fish surviving the event. And that's that update. A villager has escaped prosecution in a shoplifting case after successfully completing an anti-theft course. Carone Ray Stockman, 68, of the village of St. James, will not face prosecution on the theft charge, according to the announcement of no information earlier this month in Sumter County Court. Stockman had allowed to enter into a pretrial intervention contract, which required her to complete a four-hour anti-theft course and to complete a weekend of work detail in Sumter County. The Michigan native was caught on surveillance February 25, leaving the Walmart at Sarasota Plaza in the villages without paying for $86.92 worth of merchandise. And that's our update. And here's an update about the so-called 600% rate hike in poll rentals from SECO. Officials in the villages are questioning SECO's energy explanation for huge increases. Supervisors in community development districts have been trying to come to terms with increases of up to 600% for pole rental and conversion to LED technology. We got a surprising bill for just under a half a million dollars. It was an eye-opener, said Community Development District 5 Board of Supervisors Chairman Gary Cadeau. We don't just write a check. We have been asking plenty of questions. CD5 is in an excellent position to weather the storm with about $12 million in reserve. I want people to know that if we have to increase the maintenance assessment, that's why we are doing it, said CD5 Supervisor Jerry Knoll. Community Development District 6 Supervisor, Community Development District 6 Chairman John Calandro was among a group of several officials from the villages who attended a three-hour meeting with SECO to try to get to the bottom of the huge increase. Calandro said he was extremely disappointed when he left the meeting. They had been asleep at the switch for a long time, Calandro said. I can tell you that had I given such a report, my successor would have given the follow-up report. SECO is a member-owned energy cooperative and not subject to the same type of government regulation as a company such as Duke Energy. Community Development District 8 Supervisor Dwayne Johnson said he suspects SECO looked at the villages as a cash cow. Absolutely. No doubt. And let me just say, I think almost half of every business around here, that's what they look, doctors. He'll send you from this doctor, oh, you need an x-ray to go to that doctor. Oh, you need a follow-up to go over to that doctor. They pass you around like you're a, you're a cash cow. I don't want them to look at our balance sheets and thinks everybody in the villages is fat and happy. His fellow CDDA supervisor, Kevin McGovern, agreed. He said the citizenry, which ultimately will pay the price for the SECO increase, needs to pay closer attention to the member-elected SECO board. 
He's telling you what I've been telling you. Pay attention who you vote for. When you get off that golf course, pay attention to what you're voting for. These are the people that's making life miserable. Don't vote for somebody because they live in the villages. And don't vote for them just because they're your next door neighbor. And don't vote for them because every time you talk to them, they seem like such a nice person. Those some of them people are in the hip pockets of other people and they're the ones five years from now you're going to be complaining about how rate increases here or there is really affecting your life here these are the people that's going to do it so pay attention who you vote for we need to know when their elections are mcgovern said yes vote them out just vote them out Let's have some more news. A villager has been arrested after police responded to a report of bad behavior at a town square. An officer was called at about 10.30 p.m. Monday to Spanish Springs Town Square after a man later identified as 73-year-old Salih Edwards Little of the village of Rio Grande approached a 12-year-old girl and told her she was hot. According to a report from the Lady Lake Police Department, he offered to purchase her a beer. Little was found standing next to this gray 2019 Chevrolet Equinox. He had a strong odor of alcoholic beverage emitting from his breath, the report said. He admitted he had been drinking. He was advised by the police not to drive. Elders indicated he would walk home. About an hour later, an officer spotted Elders at the wheel of his vehicle, backing out of the parking spot at the square. He nearly struck another parked vehicle. The New York native was asked to participate in field sobriety exercises. However, his poor performance led to officers to conclude he had been driving impaired. He provided breast samples that registered 0.131 and 0.130 blood alcohol content. During the inventory of his vehicle, a 24-pack of Bush Light beer was found. There were 23 unopened beers in the 24-pack. His vehicle was towed from the scene. He was booked at the Lake County Jail and released after posting a $1,000 bond. Disgusting. And these people live amongst us and they go to the squares. Keep an eye on your grandchildren. A homeowner in the villages has been ordered to remove artificial turf. The home owned by George Hazes at 644 Cabrera Court in Haciendas of Mission Hills was the subject of a public hearing Thursday afternoon before the Community Development District 9 Board of Supervisors at Seabreeze Recreation Center. A complaint was received in April by community standards regarding artificial grass in the side yard. Artificial turf can only be used for a putting green, but that is not what is in place at Hazes Courtyard Villa when he purchased in 2017 for $430,000. He never applied for the Architects Review Committee for permission to have artificial turf. While Hazzy has cut back on the artificial turf which has been in place, an inspection this week by Community Standards showed it is still there and the property remains out of compliance. He has been granted 45 days to bring his home into compliance. If he fails to do so, a series of fines will be imposed. I've talked about this before. Do not turn your nose up to the Architectural Review Committee. They take it personal. An uninsured and unlicensed driver from Mexico was arrested after a traffic stop in the villages. Manuel Clara Jimenez, 29, a native of Chiapas, Mexico, was driving a white Nissan panel van at about 1 p.m. Tuesday near the entrance to the village of Monarch Groves when an officer noticed that the vehicle had a suspicious-looking temporary tag. During the traffic stop, Jimenez handed the officer a Mexican voter card for identification. Jimenez also provided the officer with bogus auto liability insurance information. A temporary tag on the vehicle was also counterfeit. He was arrested on charges of failure to carry auto insurance, driving without a license, possession of a counterfeit license plate. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $2,800 bond. Sumter County House coming in on enforcing the new law. A drunk driving suspect in a golf cart led law enforcement on a wild chase down County Road 466 in the villages. Christopher Scott Esdale, 21, who lives at 2367 Unity Terrace in the village of Hadley, was driving a red golf cart at 1 a.m. Friday, taking up both lanes of traffic on County Road 466 near the Morris family compound. A Simpson County Sheriff's deputy spotted the golf cart and began pursuing it as golf carts are not permitted on County Road 466. As they maneuvered the golf cart off County Road 466 and onto the Laurel Manor Trail multimodal path. 
The deputy activated his lights and siren, but Esdell continued to flee. He got back onto County Road 466, turned onto Morris Boulevard, and began heading for Lake Sumter Landing. The deputy who had exited his squad car yelled at the Cape Cod, Massachusetts native and ordered him to stop. Esdell drove toward the deputy who forcibly removed Esdell from the golf cart and took him to the ground. Esdell had a very strong odor of alcoholic beverages coming from his breath. The deputy found a bottle of Canadian mist which had fallen from the golf cart. Esdell performed poorly in field sobriety exercises. He provided breath samples that registered 0.110 and 0.116 blood alcohol content. He was arrested on charges of driving under the influence, fleeing from law enforcement, and resisting arrest. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center on a $6,500 bond. I don't know, 21 years old, living in a retirement community. What's the matter with these people? I remember when I was 21, I didn't want to be around a bunch of old people. I want to be around people my own age to go out and have some fun with. A villa owner has been unresponsive after a complaint was lodged about weeds at the property in the villages. The home at 2428 Southern Oaks Street in the Southern Oaks Villas in the village of Lynn Haven was the subject of a public hearing Friday morning before the Community Development District 5 Board of Supervisors at Seabreeze Recreation Center. A complaint was received May 7 about overgrown weeds at the property. Efforts to contact the homeowner, Dennis Martyr, have been unsuccessful. Community standards indicated she is living in home. The utilities are on and 2023 property taxes have been paid. The homeowner was given seven days to get rid of the weeds and bring the property back into compliance. If the weeds are not removed, fines will be imposed. The property was previously the subject of a public hearing in 2021. A new restaurant is coming to the villages, a few doors down from the Publix grocery store at Lake Deaton Plaza. The Toasted Yolk Cafe is shooting for an early August opening, according to the owners Christy and Hootie Moore. The Moores operated a Toasted Yolk Cafe franchise in Springdale, Arkansas, and jumped to the chance to open a Toasted Yolk in the villages. The cafe specializes in breakfast, brunch, and lunch, with the unusual twist for a restaurant in the breakfast and lunch market, as the cafe will also have a full service bar. The Moors believe early morning golfers may enjoy a beverage with their brunch. They also will be available to cater events for their patrons. The original Toasted Yolk Cafe opened for business in 1979 and began franchising the cafe in 2010. A home that caught fire several months ago in the villages has been purchased by a contractor who has left it untouched for months. The home is located at 3292 Silwood Avenue in the village of Charlotte. At the time of the blaze, the home was owned by Geraldine Mitchell. She and her husband purchased the home in 2012 for $299,200. He died in 2019. After the fire, Mitchell sold the home to InvestWork Solutions LLC of Windmere. The company purchased the home in April, but has done nothing in terms of repair or upkeep, according to the neighbors. A complaint about the condition of the home has been lodged with community standards. It appears the case could go before the Community Development District 9 Board of Supervisors as early as August. In May, the CDD 9 Board settled a lawsuit for $12,000 after a couple whose home was destroyed by fire took many months to rectify the situation. The board had been under pressure from neighbors who are unhappy that James and Christine Noonan had been slow to replace their home at 300 Lurville Road in the village of Gilcrest. You know, they were all complaining and griping about it and all this and that. I understand. I understand. But I still say there's more to that story than what people really know. I got a feeling it was more of an insurance company dragging their feet and the homeowners were just left holding the bag. Two people suffered smoke inhalation after a lightning strike sparked a blaze at a home in the villages. The village's public safety department responded at about 9.30 p.m. Saturday to a structure fire at 2269 at Foggy Brook Loop in the village of St. Charles. Upon arrival, firefighters found heavy smoke showing from the roof. After making entry into the home, a primary search of the residence was conducted to ensure there were no occupants inside, and fire attack operations were initiated, according to the public safety department. Fire crews found a well-advanced fire in the attic, which prompted extensive fire attack operations. Two patients were identified outside with smoke inhalation. Both were treated and refused transport. The community emergency response team responded to the scene and provided firefighter rehab. The fire department was on the scene for three and a half half hours. 
I got to tell you, you know, argue about the price of fire protection and whatever. What would we do without them? The homes are so close. I mean, what's the alternative? If you don't pay, <laughs> I want them here. I support all these responders 100%. These are the ones that keep sending me the hats that I don't have on right now. <laughs> The Villages Public Safety Department quickly responded to the second of two fires sparked by lightning late Saturday night in the Villages. As crews were still on the scene of a fire in the Village of St. Charles, firefighters were called at about 10.30 p.m. Saturday to a fire at 1587 Lyman Way after a reported lightning strike. Upon arrival, the fire appeared to be in the attic space above the garage and possibly in the garage, based on how the smoke was showing, said Fire Chief Brian Twist. During the initial offensive fire attack, a primary search of the fire overcame suppression efforts and spread throughout the remainder of the attic. Units were ordered to evacuate the structure due to the amount of fire coming from the roof and the possibility of a roof collapse. A suspension efforts became ineffective. Ladder 43 began a defensive attack with the already in place elevated master stream while another unit utilized a deck gun. Their quick action brought the fire under control. There were no injuries. The community emergency response team responded to the scene and provided firefighter rehab. Firefighters were on the scene for more than four hours. Sorry for the loss of the house, but I, I congratulate the firefighters for doing a great job. A villager was arrested with fentanyl and a felony amount of marijuana. Craig Alexander Calhoun, 46, of the village of Buttonwood, was driving a gray pickup in the wee hour Sunday on US 301 near County Road 462 when he was pulled over for a non-functioning taillight, according to the arrest report. During a traffic stop, Calhoun was nervous and sweating profusely. A search of the pickup turned up 46 grams of marijuana. I don't know how much that is. Is that a lot? He was taken into custody, and while he was being booked at the Sumter County Detention Center, a substance was found found in his wallet. The substance tested positive for fentanyl. Let me guess, it wasn't his. <laughs> These ain't my pants. I was just borrowing them from a friend. What's your friend's name? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> he is facing charges including felony possession of marijuana, felony drug possession, and smuggling contraband into a detention center. He was booked at the jail on a $4,000 bond. A villager was nabbed with illicit substance in his golf cart at a town square in the villages. Officer responded at about 11.30 p.m. July 15th to investigate a report of a suspicious person at Spanish Springs Town Square, according to the arrest report. They found 53-year-old Charles George Weiss, who lives on the historic side of the villages, who was detained for erratic movement and dripping in sweat. Multiple silicone glass smoking pipes were spotted on the driver's side floorboard of the passenger seat in his golf cart. Nothing like trying to hide anything. Weiss was found to be in possession of 2.03 grams of methamphetamine. He also had marijuana, for which he had a prescription. The New York native was arrested on a felony charge of possession of a controlled substance. He was booked at the Lake County Jail and released after posting a $2,500 bond. Now here's a little news from our next door neighbors over here. A stone crusher was arrested with illicit drugs after a traffic stop in the villages. John Stepanek Jr., 56, who lives in the 55 plus gated community in Summerfield, was driving a silver passenger car shortly before midnight Friday in the vicinity of Dustin Drive and Sharon Drive on the historic side of the villages. He was pulled over for an inoperable headlight, according to the arrest report. A canine unit responded to the scene and the dog alerted on the vehicle indicating a likelihood of presence of drugs. A search of the vehicle turned up cocaine, alprazolam pills, for which Stepanik did not have a prescription. The Pennsylvania native was arrested on charges of possession of cocaine and possession of a controlled substance. He was booked at the Lake County Jail and released after posting a $5,000 bond. Well, you heard it right. We're going to get a Hooters in this retirement community. And everybody's asking the question, will it be a good fit? And I'm here to tell you, just from the people I've talked to, it's about a 50-50 thing. Though all the, most all the women are saying no. They think it's disgusting. Almost all the men are saying, but they got the best chicken wings. <laughs> The reaction has been mixed with regard to the news that Hooters is coming to the villages. Opinions appear to be split on gender as to whether Hooter wings, beer, and waitresses will be a good fit here in Florida's friendliest hometown. I'm sure there will be plenty of dirty old men that are going to love it, said Kathy Strope of the village of Silver Lake.
Hey, I might go there for a beer and some chicken wings. I've been to Hooters before, and I'm not a dirty old man. Matter of fact, I take Sue with me. If you've never been to Hooters, then you really don't know what you're talking about. She said Hooters is not her cup of tea. Have you ever been to one? Then how do you know? It's just another way that for our society devalues women as purely objects, she said. Well, at least we value you. Diane Burles doesn't think Hooters will find a fan base in a 55 plus community. Personally, I do not think it will last very long. They should stick to constructing close to college campuses. That would serve them well, she said. I'm not a fan of Hooters menu. I have little interest in the novelty that makes Hooters unique from other restaurants. When I choose to dine out, I make that choice based on first the menu and then the friendliness and efficiency of the entire staff. Based upon that, I would not go to any of the restaurants if and when they move into the villages or even nearby. Geraldine Giorgiaggio worries the Hooters atmosphere could promote bad behavior. Oh, like we don't have any bad behavior in the villages. I'm drugs. You've seen the reports every week that I do. Drugs, drunk driving, people with no license. Now we're fine. Men seem to be happy about the news of Hooters' entry into the villages. I welcome Hooters to Lake Deaton Plaza. Close to home, besides the Hooters, the wings and cold beer are always good. I will be a regular. <laughs> Jerry Pyer said he will go to Hooters, and he'll take his wife. I took mine. An unlicensed driver from Mexico was jailed after he was caught speeding. Brian Eduardo Olivier Santillan, 25, of Summerfield, was driving a black four-door Volkswagen when he was caught on radar Sunday, traveling 63 miles per hour in a 45-mile-per-hour zone in Ocala, according to a rest report from Marion County Sheriff's Office. During the traffic stop, Olivier Santillan, who does not speak English, presented a deputy with a driver's license from Mexico. He admitted through the translator he has not obtained a driver's license in the United States. He was arrested on charges of driving without a license. He was booked at the Marion County Jail on a $500 bond. The Villages has filed a lawsuit against a federal agency to protect a key part of the sales strategy, which has made the billion-dollar family business so successful. The Villages is suing the Federal Trade Commission in a bid to protect its 24-month non-compete ban on former properties of the Villages Sales Associates from selling real estate in the Villages. Earlier this year, the FTC issued a final rule to promote competition by banning non-compete agreements across the nation. The FTC's final rule to ban non-competes will ensure Americans have the freedom to pursue a new job, start a new business, or bring a new idea to market, said FTC Chair Lynn Kahn, who was appointed to the position by President Biden. The Villages is arguing that the non-compete agreement, which was famously challenged in court in 2021 by some former properties of the Villages sales representatives, who struck out on their own, does not pose unreasonable restraints on competition. The lawsuit insists that from the beginning, the Villages has offered a vastly different sales model. The Villages community started from humble beginnings in the 1980s as a mobile home park with access to free golf, the lawsuit explains. The community grew rapidly thanks to the hard work of the Villages developers and POV's dedicated sales team. POV model its approach to sales on the distinctive hospitality mindset of its founder, Gary Morris, whose values continue to drive every aspect of POV's family's business today. Developing personal lifelong relationships with residents or villagers is central to POV's business model and brand. Because of the reputation POV has built, both new and returning customers frequently turn to POV, POV stands for Property of the Villages Sales Organization, and its sales teams rather than third-party real estate brokers when looking to buy or sell property in the villages. The lawsuit makes the case that sales associates working for properties of the villages do not simply receive real estate training. They learn specifically how to sell homes in the villages. It includes an intensive three month training period. The Villages argues that the 24-month non-compete agreement ensures that a newly trained sales associate doesn't complete the three-month training and walk across the street to a competitor the day after completion. In addition, it protects the Villages from real estate competitors who might get a free ride of its sizable investment in sales associates. The lawsuit against the FTC also praises the ruling three years ago by Judge James Moody, father of Florida Attorney General Ashley Moody 
Modi. I got a lot of respect for Ashley Modi, who sided with the villages in the case against the realtors who jumped ship. Their case failed to undercut the 24-month non-compete agreement in the judge's eye. Quick little story. I know I'm bad about telling stories. Indianapolis was having a huge problem. We're hiring a lot of police officers back in the day. I mean, a lot. They couldn't keep them. They spent a lot of money training police officers just to have these officers, as soon as they got trained and graduated, they would go to another town that paid more money or closer to home or whatever the case may be and leave. And I think if I remember right back in the day, they said with all the training and everything they had, they invested something in a neighborhood of something like fifty or $55,000 per officer. And they had to start a thing. And I forget how it went, but it was something like you got your training, you had to stay there and work for at least one year, I think it was, to, so they could kind of recoup their money from you. If you decided to leave early, then you had to pay the town of Indianapolis back for your training. I thought that was fair. An unlicensed driver from Mexico was arrested after he was caught speeding in a Chevy Camaro. Amardo Brian Huazo, 25, who clarified, was that the, I'm laughing because I don't know how to pronounce these names. You tell me, it's in the picture. Was at the wheel of the Camaro at about 9 p.m. Sunday when he was caught on radar traveling at 66 miles per hour in a 50 miles per hour zone, according to the rest report. A traffic stop was initiated at U.S. Highway 27 and 441 at Lake Ela Road. Brian Huazo was the registered owner of the vehicle, was identified by his Mexican passport. He indicated he does not speak English and the Spanish-speaking officer was summoned to the scene to provide translation. Brianna Wazo indicated that he lived in Florida for three years and never obtained a driver's license in the United States. He was arrested on a charge of driving without a license. He was booked at the Lake County Jail and released after posting a $500 bond. Three years in the United States. Why didn't he get a driver's license? If he's legal, there's no reason for it. Getting a driver's license is not that difficult, so why doesn't he have one? There's a reason! Okay. How many holes in one's of golf did we get this week? Well, it looks like one. Mark Williams got his first hole in one at hole number two at the Escambia Executive Golf Course. He celebrated the lucky ace with his brother in law, Doug Hoover. Well, congratulations, Mark, and hello to your brother on your very first hole in one at the Escambia Golf Course. Have a good time. Okay, how about a couple letters to the editor? Oh, looky here. Here's a here's a letter by our old buddy, Ed McGinty. For those of you who don't know who Ed McGinty is, I'll read you the letter first. You can decide, and then I'm going to give you my short little comment. Not about the letter, but about Ed himself. To the editor. First of all, the chances of only Trump's ear being grazed by a bullet is maybe a thousand to one. I'm not saying the boy didn't fire the rifle. I'm saying something is not kosher. Mega people get upset about jokes being made about Saturday shooting. I'm upset with Trump making wise remarks about the former Speaker of the House husband, Paul, having his 82-year-old brains beaten out by a crazed Trump supporter. Where was the mega outrage then? I am hoping to gradually get every anti-Trump voter to wear orange clothing, which will represent the thought that Trump will die in prison wearing prison orange. That's sent in by our friend uh, Ed McGinty from the village of Hadley. (laughs) Can you hear it? Can you hear the anger in him? I got to tell you, here's my thing about Ed. He's got so much hate in him. He's going to die a bitter old man by himself because nobody's going to want to be around him. Sorry, Ed, but that's the truth, buddy. To the editor, about the 80-20 law. When we decided to move to the villages in 2005, we were not allowed to buy a new home because of our age. I'm with you. I checked with a real estate lawyer and was informed that the law only applies to the developer. He can allow up to 20% if he chooses. However, he can't stop anyone over the age of 19 from buying an existing home. That's not necessarily true. That would violate the federal age discrimination law. We purchased our home at 49 and there wasn't anything they could do. Dennis Gray is formerly of the village of El Santiago. Well, real quick, I'm going to tell you what this so-called 80-20 rule here was approved. Every 55 plus community in Florida has different rules. Ask yourself the question, how do they get different rules if it's just a law? It's not. The law does say up to 20% under the age could be here, but not just randomly sell a house to anybody under the age of, let's say a guy 65 years old is married to a 45 year old chick. Okay. He dies suddenly. 
she's under the 55 age. That 80-20 rule allows her to stay in the house and doesn't have to move because she's part of that 20%. It protects her. It's not a 20% to say anybody 19 years old can come in here and buy a house. Everybody's got it so twisted out of shape. I don't even think it's even a rule anymore. I think the day's going to come. Our retirement community status, our 55 plus status is going to be taken away. And it's just going to be another town. That's all. Well, that'll be my my random gatherings this week. I hope you enjoyed the news. Remember, anything that I say in here is just my opinion. You don't have to like it. That's your opinion. You're entitled to it. Put them in the comments below. Anything I say you don't agree, put it in comments below. With that being said, support our channel if you want to. It's easy done. You can do it one or several ways. Be a Patreon member. That is the way I really prefer it. You can get in Patreon for as little as two bucks a month, and everything's commercial free. You'll get all the invites to our uh, members' lunch when we have them. We don't have them regularly, but when we do, you'll get the invites to our members only discord page where everybody on that discord page is a member of mine and it's a private discord page so you won't have to worry about somebody from the outside coming in and harassing you or, or you know how some people are they're real tough when it comes to the keyboard you won't have that problem in there matter of fact a lot of the people that's in my discord you'll, you'll probably meet them at our members lunch you can be a member on YouTube. I got no problem with it. Don't take this the wrong way. I'm just trying to help you save money and me make a little money. Cheapest you can get in YouTube memberships is $5 a month. Well, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Be well. Stay safe. Stay alert. Be aware. See you on the other side. And don't leave your key in the golf cart. This week's news is brought to you by my Patreon and YouTube members. Thanks, guys. You're the best.